Drew Liske here with Orion Outdoors Company, and today I have a top five review of the best five over-under shotguns under $2,500. In this review, I've used three main criteria to pick those five guns. Number one is dependability, uh, which is going to embrace kind of the mechanics of those shotguns. Number two is going to be the ergonomics. Uh, ergonomics meaning how the gun points and balances in your hand. And then number three is going to be aesthetics. Uh, aesthetics being the engraving, uh, the level of wood, and the attention to detail on the gun as a whole. Let's take a look. So we'll start off with number five. Uh, number five was the hardest for me to choose. Uh, a lot of contenders out there for the last placement on the list. Uh, kind of the three main ones that I came to, and I had to choose just one of the three, uh, was going to come down to the Weatherby Orion, the Franke Instinct Sporting Number 2, or the Winchester Model 101. And of those three, I chose the Franke Instinct Sporting of the three. Uh, I don't have one of those models here in front of me. I have a, a Franke Instinct Field model here, uh, just as a placeholder. Uh, but the reason I chose the Franke Instinct Sporting is because it has an all-steel receiver. Uh, the Instinct Sporting is about 1990 uh, mat pricing, so minimum advertised pricing. Uh, typically going to sell for probably a little bit below that. Uh, but the Instinct is going to have an all-steel receiver, adjustable comb, extended choke tubes. You kind of get the best of you know all the characteristics that you're looking for in a sporting clays gun under that $2,000 price point. It doesn't have the best mechanical design of the ones that we're going to mention. Uh, aesthetics are pretty simple and plain on the Franke Instinct Sporting. Uh, in addition, uh, it doesn't have the best pointability, pointability necessarily, uh, but in terms of adjustability, in terms of having you know a strong locking mechanism, uh, the Instinct Sporting from Franke, uh, which is imported by Benelli USA and serviced by Benelli USA, is really a good option for an over and under, under that $2,500 price point. For number four, we have the Fausti Caledon Sporter. Uh, I, I call it a sporter, uh, but it is available both in hunting and sporting models uh, without much of a distinction. Uh, the sporting model, at least what I would call a sporting model, has 12 gauge 30 inch barrels and a manual safety. Uh, this, the Caledon is really a nice price point gun. It's Fausti's entry level over and under. Uh, Fausti being made in Italy. Uh, this gun has an all steel receiver. Uh, which is kind of a very important thing to me when I'm looking at a clay's gun that's going to last a long time. A steel receiver is going to be heavier, stronger built, and more recoil absorption than, say, an aluminum receiver. Uh, the criteria that this Fausti really exceeds in, or excels in, is aesthetics. Uh, of the five guns, it's the only one with like a, a tri-wood or a faux wood finish grain on it, uh, so it's real wood which has been dipped or coated for protection and for a better look. Uh, it really makes the gun look significantly better and offers some durability enhancements as well. Uh, this gun is probably the most engraved of the five options that we're going to be showing today. Uh, we've got some acanthus scroll. We have some you know, Fausti embellishments in gold. We have some bird enhancements on the bottom of the gun and on the trigger guard. Uh, we really have a lot of features in terms of appearance uh, that really make this gun excel in that category. In terms of durability, uh, I already mentioned it has a steel receiver, uh, which is a good pro. Fausti is known for having a very strong lockup mechanism. It's a box action gun. I really have no complaints on you know how the gun locks up, how it opens, or how it was designed, especially being that it's you know under twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, Fausti offers a lot of more expensive guns uh, way above this, which have very similar lockup mechanisms. And the last bit that we talked about was ergonomics, how the gun balances and weighs. It's about seven and a half pounds, uh, a little bit barrel heavy, a little bit of a thicker fore than I would like, uh, but it definitely has a nice feel to it. It's relatively well balanced uh, within a couple inches of the hinge pin. Uh, the gun has a little bit of a heavy trigger, around six and a half pounds. Uh, so that's one thing that it may not excel at as well as some other guns that we're going to be showcasing. Uh, it's kind of heavy of a trigger pull. Definitely not as bad as a lot of cheaper guns. Uh, but that's kind of all the criteria on what makes the Fausti Caledon a great over and under, under $2,500. Number three on our list is the Rosini BR110 Sporter. 
Also made in Italy, uh, the Rosini BR-110 Sporter is definitely a purpose-built shotgun. It has a nice appearance, though relatively bland in general. Uh, Rosini definitely focused more on making this a very functional, strong-built gun as opposed to putting a lot of their funds and, and attention onto the detail of the engraving. We have a matte finish, black or grayish look to it. Uh, kind of what you would expect to see like a, of like a gray Cerakote style receiver. It is an all steel receiver. Uh, though we do have some high gloss blued finish touches on the trigger guard as well as the top lever. Uh, the barrel itself is also more of a matte finished look. Uh, like I mentioned, the Rosini is kind of in a monochrome uh, laser engraving on the actual receiver itself. Uh, this is the only black receiver gun that we're going to be featuring, so it definitely is a little bit unique. Uh, they tend to put a little bit nicer pieces of wood with a better oil finish on it than some of the other makes at this price point. Uh, definitely their oil finish. Uh, they spent more time on it than a lot of the other manufacturers under that $2,500 price point. Uh, so we've hit up the aesthetics of the gun quite a bit already. Uh, let's talk about durability. Uh, so the Rosinis are known uh, for making a good box lock style gun. Uh, and the majority of their models are based on the same system that we see here in the BR-110 Sporting. It's a very strong lockup, and you can definitely feel in your hands when you open and close it. It just feels robust, you know, durable. Uh, the receiver is significantly wider and heavier uh, than some of the cheaper entry point guns that you might see on the market, made in Turkey, for example. Uh, I really like the fact that it has a, a steel receiver. I've mentioned that a whole bunch of times, but whenever you're looking for a clay target gun, preferably look for one with a steel receiver. Uh, in terms of balance point, we'll get into ergonomics a little bit. Uh, the Rosini balances very nicely, just forward of the hinge pin. Uh, we can see that here. Uh, one of the things that they've done to make the barrels not as heavy, though being 30 inch or 32 inches long, is they have a ventilated top rib and a ventilated mid rib. We have a Bradley style front sight and extended choke tubes on the Rosini BR-110 Sporter, uh, which very few guns at this price point offer. Uh, so it kind of gives you all the accessories that you need out of the box uh, to make it a great shooting sporting clays gun. In addition, you may notice this stock is a little bit different. This is a compact youth or lady style stock. Uh, they offer this model with both the youth stock and the full length stock and left or right handed. Uh, so it's kind of a, the first manufacturer that you're going to reach in the $2,500 price point or less uh, that's going to give you the options to have a true left-handed gun, a true right-handed gun, or a compact stock. Uh, for those reasons, it's very adjustable, uh, very modular to different types of people. I'm definitely a fan of this gun. Uh, a lot of people shy away from it because of the look, because it's not as, as flashy as some of the other options. Uh, but in terms of the durability of the gun, uh, you get a lot for your money with the Rosini. Number two, the Satori CXS. Uh, so the Browning Satori crossover series is their entry point uh, dedicated clays gun. Uh, they offer the Satori crossover in a CXS, which is shown here. This is a flat rib model. They offer a CX, which is a kind of a mid rib model that shoots a 60-40 point of impact, and a CXT, which is a trap model with a 70-30 point of impact. Uh, the crossover series uh, uses you know, the Satori uh, design makeup, makeup and mechanism. Uh, the Satori series are known for being durable, reliable guns. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, the Satori is just as good as any other when it comes to the durability. Uh, Browning is known for, at times, having a little bit weaker firing pins than some manufacturers. So that may mean one thing, but it's very easy to change. Uh, I wouldn't discount the gun because of a firing pin, for example. Uh, moving on to aesthetics, uh, we really have a nice balance, a nice classy look with the Satori crossover. Uh, we've got a polyurethane finish stock uh, with pretty nice wood in general. Uh, the Satori series uh, tend to be a little bit bland uh, in terms of the wood makeup and the grade of the wood, uh, but this one looks nice and it especially looks nice when paired with the receiver. You know, a nice nickel finish receiver tends to look good regardless of what kind of a gun that you put on it, especially when it's finished in this polyurethane. Uh, moving forward, we have a nice uh, Schnabel style checkered forend. It's pretty wide, though it gets thinner at the end, which I like. In general, I mentioned earlier, I prefer a thinner forend 
just makes the gun point and handle a little bit better. And then as we go down the gun, in terms of aesthetics, we do get a nice uh, gloss finish blued barrel. Uh, and all the attention to detail in terms of the browning is nice. You know, they, I've never really seen one uh, have significant issues in terms of like wood to metal fit. Uh, they do a good job with that. Uh, you want to make sure that you keep the stock bolt tight. I've seen a couple occasions uh, browning ship guns that are a little bit loose with the stock bolt. Uh, that's more of an, uh, you know, just uh, a minor note to make, uh, but always check that. And then the last criteria is ergonomics. Uh, the CXS is my favorite in the crossover series in terms of ergonomics. It's got the best balance of all the guns. Uh, the pistol grip feels really nice and comfortable in your hands. Uh, the Brownings are known in general, unless you get to the 725 series, uh, being a little bit barrel heavy. Uh, if you're a Browning owner, that's probably something that you've, you've grown up knowing and you love it and you'll never change. Uh, however, a lot of other guns do have a little bit lighter, faster, you know, more agile moving barrels. Uh, not so much the case. So with the Browning, you tend to be a little bit slower, a little bit smoother, uh, but a little bit more forward heavy. Uh, the CXS, the flattest rib option, is definitely the lightest. As you get those taller rib options, the barrel starts to get heavier and heavier. Uh, that's just primarily because of the style of the rib. Uh, the rib is really wide. Browning makes really strong barrels, added weight. Uh, not much you can do about that. They do have the ventilated mid rib and ventilated top rib, uh, which is their attempt to make it lighter, uh, which is definitely a good thing that they did. We've got a Bradley style front sight and extended choke tubes. Uh, no box comes with the Browning Satori crossover series, uh, but kind of all the features that you need. Uh, one really cool thing that the gun offers, in terms of ergonomics, a little bit in terms of aesthetics, is it has a uh, trigger plate or trigger guard uh, here that can actually be adjusted for length of pull. Uh, the trigger shoe, they call it, has different options you can get from Browning if you want like a different material or texture on your trigger blade. Uh, but that can be moved for adjustable length of pull. Uh, I think I believe that's the only gun we've mentioned so far that offers the adjustable length of pull. And the next gun that we're going to talk about, which is number one, does not have that. Uh, so the Browning Satori series, all in all, really good gun. Uh, very dependable. Uh, kind of spectacular in terms of the aesthetics, if you ask me. It's not like really out there, not the engraving of the, the, the Fausti. Uh, but everything together just gives it a nice classy feel and look. And then definitely the ergonomics are nice on this gun. Number one, uh, the leading gun on our list is the Breda 686 Silver Pigeon 1 Sporting. Uh, it's probably no surprise, we talk about it quite often, we did a review on it before, uh, but of the criteria that I think make a good shotgun, uh, this one is kind of best in class in all three of those criteria. Number one is durability, uh, the 686 Silver Pigeon series is built on the 686 action. Uh, Brett has been making it for a long time. Uh, they perfected it. It's a strong action, strong locking mechanism uh, where you have uh, lugs that go into the barrel. It's really, you know, you can tell that it's well built. It's not going to come off face easily. Uh, for me, a real testament to a strong gun is how many rounds can you shoot through it. Uh, we have these as rental guns at our two shooting range locations. And the Silver Pigeon Sporting Series lasts like forever. Uh, we might maybe change a firing pin here and there. Uh, but I've seen these guns go 50, 60, 70,000 rounds in a year or two uh, with minimal maintenance with no problems. Uh, there's very few other guns out there that I could say the same about. Uh, moving into uh, the aesthetics of the gun, uh, this gun really does stand out uh, because it has almost full coverage engraving. We have a laser engraved rose and scroll style theme, a little bit floral, uh, but it has full coverage. You know, there is some areas that are not engraved, but for the most part, Beretta has not uh, neglected any components of the metal on this gun. We've got engraving on the tap lever, engraving on both sides of the receiver, engraving on the forend iron, engraving on the bottom of the receiver, the bottom of the trigger guard, and the bottom of the forend latch. Uh, we've got a lot of engraving. Uh, it really makes the gun very classy looking and it grabs your attention, uh, which is one of the reasons why it definitely is one of our most common uh, guns to sell here in our showroom. Uh, people just see it out of the corner of their eye and they're gravitated to want to pick it up. And then once they pick it up, they're surprised 
because it has really good ergonomics, criteria number three. Uh, the gun really balances well. Uh, of all the guns I mentioned, it probably has uh, the lightest barrels, especially considering the length of the barrels. Uh, the Silver Pigeon 1 Sporting is available in 30 or 32 inch. This is a 32, and it feels a lot lighter than any of the other guns we had in 30 inch. Uh, the barrels are just, you know, lighter than most. Uh, they have no extended chokes, so that could be part of the reason. Uh, we have a thinner rib than some of the other guns we mentioned. A ventilated mid-rib and a ventilated top rib. Uh, the, the grip, the forend of the Silver Pigeon is very nice, very slim and slender, which are characteristics that I like. Uh, I like my hands as close to the center of the axis of the gun as possible. Uh, the Silver Pigeon 1 Sporting has the thinnest forend that we've seen so far. It also has a full coverage forend check ring, kind of similar to the Rosini, uh, which I'm preferential to, especially if you're shooting in all different types of conditions. It's going to give you a great grip on the gun. Pistol grip is standard, comfortable. Uh, one other thing about ergonomics is the adjustability of the gun. Uh, adjustability in terms of what you can buy. Uh, they offer this in left-handed configuration and right-handed configuration, which is what this is, as well as in their Vittoria or their compact or lady style guns. Uh, so we've got a lot of different options. Uh, kind of the best that Rosini offers, as well as what Breda has to offer, kind of all combined together in one gun and that's the Beretta 686 Silver Pigeon 1 Sporting. And that concludes our review of the top five over-under shotguns under $2,500. If you own one of the guns we've mentioned, we'd love to hear your comments, positive or negative, about them. If you own a gun that was not in the list, we'd love to hear about it too. We may be able, able to take it and, and do a review and feature it in an upcoming video. Speaking of upcoming videos, we have one that's coming up soon. It'll be the top 10 Sporting Clay shotguns over $2,500. Uh, it'll be one that will be released soon. Uh, in order to find out when it's going to come and to be alerted when it does get launched, uh, we really recommend that you like and subscribe to our channel. It means a lot to us to know that you support us and that you want to see our future videos. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Have a great day.